What's up everybody, Destin Laguerre here. I am back. I think we're gonna kill the tunes, but it is great to see everybody. I don't, I don't know what happened, like OBS crashed or something. The kids are going nuts. So, <laughs> you know, it's just another Sunday. Let me turn this down a bit. Something weird happens when I play music, like it, it gets like tripled up on the desktop audio for some reason. And then the uh, audio input capture is like too low sometimes. So like I, my, I've had some audio issues lately. Anyway, enough about that. It's good to see y'all. I have been playing Destiny. That has been fun. I really enjoyed the Fallout television show and yeah, it was good. It was good to see you back for Fireteam Chat. Well, thank you, Fresco, over on Twitch for watching. I do appreciate you hanging out. Um, I might do another one next week. I wanted to do one this week, but uh, I just couldn't get it together at the last second. So I think we're going to do another one next week. And then we'll see what happens after that. Like, if there's news, I'm going to talk about it. But yeah, operating the PC like a boomer. Yeah, I mean, yeah. OBS has this thing, like sometimes I go live and then it just like craps out for some reason. And then sometimes it's fine. Also hurt my thumb, uh, fixing the water system in our yard. Uh, it hurts. Uh, like there was water going all over the place. So I fixed that real quick. That's why y'all tune in to know about my gardening injuries. <laughs> I dug a hole this weekend. It was very fun. I put rocks on top of it. It was very fulfilling. It looks very nice. We had this patch of dirt. And uh, yeah, rule of thumb. Come on now. Finally caught you live. Well, uh, it is a slow week. So I'll tell you that right now. It is a slow news week this week, but I do appreciate y'all hanging out, watching live. We had a, a weird issue where the stream crapped out. My bitrate set to 2,100, so yeah. So real quick, I'll take the headphones off and we can do a little bit of a VOD. Uh, let's see Let's see if I can do this off the cuff. As you know, sometimes I do the VODs live on the show, so let's, let's see how it goes so I can get a show out next week. The Fallout TV show has blown everybody away. There's a ton of positivity, a little bit of drama about New Vegas for people who haven't quite finished the show yet. Let's talk about what everybody's reaction has been. We're going to start with my reaction because I thought that the show was amazing. I really, really loved it. And one of my tweets got a little bit more attention than I expected. I said something along the lines of, uh, I think the Fallout TV show is better than the Last of Us TV show. And I held the Last of Us in very high regard. A lot of people saw that as me being console warrior or something. No, I think the Last of Us TV show is probably one of the best video game adaptations in terms of television to date. Did they take some liberties? Yes, but I thought it was phenomenal and I really, really enjoyed it. So then the Fallout show came along and uh, I had early screeners that were provided to me. And I, I was like, oh, like it's just another video game TV show. You know, Halo season two was better, but it wasn't like drastically uh, better than what had already been problematic with that series. So like it was an improvement, but not uh, great. So I finally watched the Fallout TV show and I could not put it down. I watched the entire show. I, I would have done it in a night if I wasn't completely exhausted <laughs> being a dad and everything. Uh, I watched like six episodes back to back. I went to sleep. And as soon as I could, I finished the last two episodes. It is phenomenal. If you've been considering watching the Fallout TV show, I highly, highly recommend it. I really, really enjoy it. Uh, to give you a little bit of context about the show without going into too many spoilers, it follows three characters. Ella Purnell, who plays Lucy, basically grew up in a vault, and the vault was all about, you know, basically propagating the human species. So uh, getting busy with, with other vault mates uh, was definitely a focus of the show. 
And then there was uh, Kyle McLaughlin, which plays Hank, her father. There's uh, Aaron Moten, who plays uh, Maximus, who is a character that you see in a lot of the artwork wearing the power armor. And then Walter Goggins, who plays the ghoul. So I just want to say I, I really adored Ella Purnell as Lucy. I think she was perfect she played the fish out of water role really really well and you can see she's clearly very special because she's able to adapt or the way the writers made her character made it so that lucy adapted really well to the universe and can hold her own in a lot of these battles i really really liked that concept and the dichotomy of her relationship with the other characters and how they get intermingled. I liked, I liked all of it, honestly. Uh, uh, Maximus also, he seems a little bit like an interesting character where I can't tell if he actually wants to be in the brotherhood or he just has this, uh, strange attachment to them because of a traumatic incident that happened in his childhood that I, I don't want to spoil it. I'm trying not to spoil it for y'all, but a uh, very interesting character. He does end up getting the power armor. I mean, it's in the, the television show art, so that's not too much of a spoiler, right? And uh, I like how they sort of take him on that journey of becoming the power armor wearer and the twists and turns that are introduced with that character and... One thing the show really gets right, especially with his character, I think once his character is introduced, they 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 get that um, dark humor introduced in a really, really fun way. And I really, really love that. It feels like you're playing Fallout and the reason that we all love the Fallout games. And then finally, definitely the, the star of the show in terms of uh, range was Walter Goggins. Walter Goggins is definitely a flawed, imperfect character. And he plays the ghoul that you've probably seen in a lot of the art. And we learn a lot about uh, his past. We learn about what he's going through in the current day. And I really, really liked his portrayal of the character. And as we learn more about him, just what happens with that character. The Fallout TV show, the long and the short of it is, uh, the Fallout TV show uh, knocked my socks off, just like you can knock my socks off right now by hitting that subscribe button, hitting that bell or hitting that like button. If you're already subscribed, I greatly appreciate it. Uh, there is a little bit of drama surrounding new Vegas because apparently there is a moment where there is a fall of new Vegas shown on a chalkboard with an arrow that points to a nuke and people were really upset until they finished the show. And then they were like, Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> so, um, there, there was a little bit of drama about a new Vegas incident that took place, but I'll just say maybe finish the show before you get to riled up about that whole aspect. But, uh, overall, I, I do think that the show follows a bit of a similar plot to fallout three, which is right up my alley. Cause fallout three is one of my favorite games of all time. And what's really, really fun is a lot of the Fallout games are now, hopefully I have this set up right, uh, getting a 200% player count boost amid TV show hype. Uh, it was announced that Fallout 4 is going to get graphic updates. A lot of people are playing Fallout 4 and Fallout 76. And just a little bit of a PSA there. There is a big sale on Steam right now. You can get every Fallout game that exists for $49. That includes Fallout, and it's all like the best versions of the games. So it's like uh, Fallout 3 Game of the Year Edition, Fallout 4 Game of the Year Edition. Uh, it's Fallout 1 and 2. Uh, all the Fallouts. Uh, Juan, thank you for the subscribe with Twitch Prime. I don't get a lot of uh, notifications over there on Twitch, but thank you so much. Um and if you're looking to get all of the games, definitely, definitely get uh, uh, the Fallout games right now because they are on a super sale on Steam. Uh, also, they are in Game Pass. You can play all of the games right now via Amazon. They are also on PlayStation Plus. Granted, Fallout 3 and New Vegas are streamable via PlayStation Plus just because of the PlayStation 3 backwards compatibility issues. But if you have any interest in playing the games, I personally would recommend playing three and then New Vegas and then four and stay away from Fallout 76. I do not think 
Fallout 76, even the modern version of Fallout 76 is the best presentation for that franchise. I think Fallout 3 holds up and I think New Vegas holds up. And that is the long and the short of my little ramble about it. Uh, I did want to talk a little bit about my controversial tweet really quick. So I tweeted, I think the Fallout show was better than The Last of Us show. And people started losing their minds because I posted it like a day before it came out. But um, you know what's really funny? Uh, after everybody started to watch it, they were like, oh, you know what? He's kind of right. This is really good. <laughs> so they were super mad. And then they realized I was right. That happens from time to time, you know, when I, when I get it right. So yeah, I'm not, I never said, I never, ever said that the follow, uh, the last of us show was bad. I adore the last of us show. I just said, I think that the fallout show was better and it's, it's really, really great. And now we have two great video game adaptations. And isn't that awesome? Isn't that a great thing that we have two great video adaptations? Uh, Hasendor also pointed out all four follow titles on Xbox will now be 60 FPS and enhanced for the series X and S owners. Fallout 4, I believe is happening on April 25th. So keep an eye out for that one. Let me know what you think about the Fallout show in the comments below because I loved it. I want more people to watch it. Even if you're not familiar with Fallout, you can get you can really really enjoy it. What a fantastic adaptation. I hope they continue going with more seasons of the show. That will be my vod for the Fallout thing. Would love to hear your thoughts on it, but man, it was it's just a good show. It's just good through and through. Um it is a great show. Oh, I forgot about the whiteboard. I do have the whiteboard out for the for anybody who leaves a, a tip or whatever they're called. Uh, let me just check a setting really quick here. Yep, we're live. Uh, hopefully nothing's breaking. Nothing has broken. Great. I, I have a few topics. Like, unfortunately, like that was the fun topic. Uh, here's another story that's kind of interesting. So do you remember when Blizzard Entertainment and NetEase had to suspend their, their, uh, deal? Where's your hat? What do you mean, Brett? Did you order a hat? Your other stream was up there. I was waiting for it. You might want to take it down. My other stream was what? All right. Let me see here. Let's see what's going on. Burp. No, it's me. It's me sitting there watching it. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, it seems like it's all going good. All right, real quick technical check. Let's see what's going on. I'm not sure what you're talking about, Brett. Brett, if you ordered a hat, that's all handled by like, that's all handled by an external provider. Nobody's ordered anything from the merch store <laughs> for a long time. And I, I haven't really mentioned it, but uh, hopefully you get your hat soon. I hope you do. You got last week's stream set up as upcoming. What do I do? How do I fix this? What happens? <laughs> uh, I don't know how to fix anything. This is great content, right? So it just says live. Just delete this. Just how do I edit this? Uh, edit video, delete, get out of here. All right. Hopefully that doesn't ruin everything. Y'all. <laughs> yeah. That's so weird. It's never done that before. Uh, all right. So my YouTube, yeah. If you go to live now, it's the live one. Great. All right. So we're all good, right? Everybody Did I break everything. Uh, man, some of the topics after the fallout one. So it's great that the fallout show is great. Unfortunately, uh, there's been some drama this last week that I'm going to talk about. That is, it's a little weird, but good to see everybody. Thank you for hanging out. So first things first, uh, do you remember when blizzard entertainment and NetEase 
how to suspend their services in China. Well, it turns out uh, Bobby Kotick was probably the culprit. A year and a half after its bitter breakup with NetEase, Blizzard has made a new deal to bring its games back to China with NetEase. This was announced not that long ago via, um, I believe we saw it on, well, here's the official press release. And there was a photo with, I think it was like Phil Spencer, the new Blizzard CEO and a bunch of people, but they have figured out a way to bring their games back and make a lot of money. So, you know, big shock. And uh, you know what? Former employee Mike Ibarra actually had a hot take that I super duper disagree with. Uh, I wasn't too active on Twitter this week. I don't think I was too hyped about the Destiny news. Um, oh, yeah. Here's the post from Blizzard Entertainment. Our legendary worlds are for all to share, and that includes our passionate Chinese community. We are pleased to announce a new agreement with NetEase to bring Blizzard games back to mainland China. Thank you for your patience and support. So it looks like they've worked things out. And I believe this is the new Blizzard CEO. We did a little bit of a story about her when she announced, and uh, obviously that's Phil Spencer, and this must be the NetEase CEO. It's great to see that they, they figured it all out and that China can get World of Warcraft back. I have to imagine it's going to be like, you know, nothing ever happened and things will just start working again. Uh, where's the bar's bad take? <laughs> my... uh, let me find it. I'll just find it because I think he got ratio pretty hard about it. Oh, he's tweeting a lot. Well, I can find the story about his tweet. Here we go. All right. So here's his tweet. <laughs> Sorry, that took me a little bit of a while. So here's what Abara wanted to say. And I think it's a terrible take. I've thought about this idea for a while as a player since I've been diving into single player games lately. When I beat a game, there are some that just leave me in awe of how amazing the experience was. At the end of the game, I've often thought, I wish I could give these folks another $10 or $20 because it was worth more than my initial $70 and they didn't try to nickel and dime me every second. Games like Horizon Zero Dawn, God of War, Red Dead Redemption 2, Baldur's Gate 3, Elden Ring, etc. I know $70 is already a lot, but it's an option at the end of the game I wish I had at times. Some games are that special. I know most will dislike this idea. By the way, I realize we are tired of tipping and everything else, but I view this different from a pressure to tip type scenario many face and give feedback on. This is a terrible idea. First of all, make a game, set your price, and Make sure it's complete. Make sure it functions. Don't take it away from me a few years after it's been in service, Ubisoft. Uh, and no, I don't think we should have a tipping system. Separately, most of the games he listed are owned by billion and trillion dollar companies. I think the billion and trillion dollar companies can handle compensating their employees fairly and they do not need a another $20 from me. I, I think this is a colossally bad idea. That money would not go to like the combat designer or level editor or something. It would go to Sony. It would go to Sony corporate. It wouldn't like see any beneficial game gain to any individual at the company. So, uh, I think he's coming from a, I, I don't know where that that's coming from. I think it's a colossally bad take out of touch take. And, um, I very much disagreed with it. So like super much. And, uh, yeah. So my tweet was, I think here's my tweet right here. I think the billion and trillion dollar companies can handle compensating their employees fairly instead of relying on a tip from me because it's not like my money goes into the co goes to the combat designer level artist. It goes into the corporate piggy bank. You may as well just buy their stock. So like if you really like a video game company, just buy stock in Microsoft. It would be the same thing as leaving a tip. You can do partial stock purchases like, yeah. So like with the example of From Software or Larian, 
Larian has been very clear that they are very happy with the sales of Baldur's Gate 3. They don't necessarily need more of your money. So just be like happy that they offered a product to you at a price. You played it and you got joy and happiness out of it. What in the world is he talking about? And what's really scary is he ran Blizzard. So that philosophy could still be within Blizzard. And I'm like, where did this come from? Is this something video game companies are thinking about? It's in, it's an insane take to me. Hey, I, I wish I could give more money. Uh, Micah Barr, I'm sure, is very, very rich, by the way. Uh, like, let's say he got a thousand shares just for the, the merger and everything like like he's a millionaire. He, I'm sure he's fine off on, on funds, but uh, I thought it was a little bit crazy, it, like super weird tweet to come from a former uh, the former person that ran Blizzard, in my opinion. Uh, and I very much disagree with it. Um, what else do we got here? Oh, yeah. So this one, I don't know how much I want to go into this one, but basically possibility space closes before shipping first game. And what happened was the CEO heard that Ethan Gatch over at Kotaku was reaching out and had some specific details about what was happening at the company. Um, apparently, there's an issue with the the owner's wife being unwell which is, which is incredibly uh, disappointing to hear. It's a shame, right? And I, I definitely understand that. But the, the reaction Jeff Strain, the CEO of this company had was uh, he immediately closed the company, fired everybody, and just said, I'm leaving gaming forever. It, it was an astounding, insane reaction to the story. So this was originally broken over on, I want to say Polygon, and let's just read the message. So basically, here's what they said. In a bizarre studio closure, and the article hadn't even been published yet, Possibility Space owner Jeff Strain blamed the studio closure on employees leaking information to the press. Here's what they were sent. Last Late last week, I received a list of topics and questions from Ethan Gatch, a reporter at Kotaku, regarding an article he's writing about Pritania Media and the closure of Crop Circle Games. Much of it was expected, but I was also stunned to see non-public information about Project Vonnegut. Disclosure of our publishing partner with details of our businesses and financial relationship and details of internal P&L discussions and confidential all-company meetings. Mr. Guest specifically credits current employees as the source of his information. Leaks of this nature are typically malicious and done by outside hacking, so to see internal team members under a confidentiality agreement engage in this was shocking. Given the company's own strict confidentiality and notification obligations, I immediately got on a plane for in-person meetings with our publishing partner to disclose the information breach and to discuss the impact on the project. During that discussion, our partner expressed low confidence they would be willing to invest the additional resources needed to complete the game, so we mutually agreed to cancel Vonnegut. This is insane, by the way. As a result of the cancellation of the publishing relationship and after careful consideration, I am closing Possibility Space. Today is your last day of employment with Possibility Space and Pritania Media. Your final paycheck, including pay for work through the end of today, will be deposited into your account along with any other required payments as dictated by your work location. For employees located outside the United States, today will serve as the final day of your notice period and your final day of employment, employment is currently scheduled for April 19, 2024. However, all non-U.S. employees like their U.S. peers will have no work obligations after today. In addition, all employees affiliated with the PEO will have their employment separation processed according to applicable law. It will take a few more days to finalize details of the termination agreement with our publishing partner, calculate our tax insurance vendor and contractor obligations and any other outstanding liabilities, and then determine what we can offer for severance. I've retained a DC based global law firm to oversee the wind down of the studio. By the way, 
So I'm reading all this. This is because a journalist reached out to him with questions saying, Hey, I've heard the following about your studio. And I had a few questions and he just shut everything down. He just said, we're done. The whole studio is done. You're all fired. So the reaction to this is, is nuts. In my opinion, it was pretty, pretty crazy. I've retained a DC based global law firm to oversee the wind down of the studio and employment attorney from that firm will soon follow up to your personal email address with additional details. And that person will be your direct point of contact from here on for all matters related to your employment, including continuation of insurance benefits, severance payments, and or associated separation agreements. A copy of this email has also been sent to your personal email address. You may keep your development equipment provided you permanently delete all company confidential information, confirm you have done so in writing and strictly abide by your existing confidential confidentiality obligations, including proper handling of company IP and any other confidential and proprietary information. This confirmation will be coordinated through the forthcoming communications noted above. He's just like, keep all your stuff, keep your laptops, computers, whatever. I don't care. Just delete it. They just delete it all. He just said, delete it all. It's insane. As of today, I'm stepping away from the game industry to focus on my family and care for Anne, Annie. Uh, I wish all of you the best as you navigate this complex industry and the challenges and opportunities ahead. So I've seen some stuff online about how uh, his wife may be uh, on well, and that is why he decided to close the company like in addition though he lost all his funding because of this so he flew to the the publishing partnership and they're just like all your funding's gone so that's it's an insane reaction to me it's just like to and he seems like he's putting all the blame on the fact that kotaku had this story and like he blamed his employees like it, it's a very uh, cold email and very strange. And he's just like, I'm done. So I don't know what was going on. I don't know if they were already like in trouble or something. So that's crazy. It's just absolutely nuts to me. Um, yeah. What do you think about it? I, yeah, I, I was pretty shocked by the reaction to the story in question. So I, I don't know if that's true about his wife or whatever, but uh, still, it's absolutely crazy. Um, Someone broke NDA and he just closed the studio. Sounds like there was money misplaced and he's turtling. I wondered about that. Like, I thought it was exceptionally strange that this, this happened in this manner, right? It was certainly odd to say the least. Okay, I'm going to talk about Star Wars Outlaws. We're going to talk about the main issue with Star Wars Outlaws because I feel like there is a bit of a mixed messaging going on with this property. This is the problem with Star Wars Outlaws. Let's be very clear. The fact that the base game is $69.99, and I am aware of the other stuff. We're going to get that in a second. Uh, you get the base game... And you get a pre-order bonus, which is a cosmetic pack and a cosmetic pack, right? Uh, if you spend $109.99 US dollars, you get three days early access and the season pass, which includes two DLCs that will release after launch, which allow you to keep exploring the game. And I believe it includes day one DLC. Or is that the ultimate edition? There is a version of the game. So you get the base game, you get the pre-order bonus, you get three day early access and you get the season pass. The Star Wars Outlaws season pass includes two DLCs that will release after launch. Keep exploring the world of Star Wars Outlaws with an all new story quests and areas to discover the Jabba's Gambit exclusive mission available at launch. This is content that has been removed from the game to be sold at a higher price point of $109.99. I had a conversation about this not that long ago. You know what? I know what I'm writing for IGN this week. I'm going to write about how this is absolutely ridiculous. 
And this is a practice that is just nuts. Let me see if I can actually bring it up because I have some quotes collected about, whoops. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Woo. Hi, everybody. Good to see you again, Filaroni. That was close. Uh, let me find this copy of the thing. This one, I think. So I had a conversation about this not that long ago, right? With Larian's uh, Cromwell. And he kind of talked about this. The conventional logic is that players are not as price sensitive as people think, but this applies to 40 to 60. They say it doesn't make a difference. Leaping to $100 when quality can't be trusted would be suicide, especially with the decline of marketing avenues. The problem with a more modest inflation increase to $80, for example, is that you're still fighting for screen time in a crowded market where there's less and less screen time each year. So the opportunity... So the, sorry, so though operationally viable, raising is antithetical to the screen time problem also. This is essentially what's so messy about the industry at the moment. You need to invest much larger sums to compete, but it's for screen time and less for shelf space. There's a lot less screen time than there ever was shelf space. So risk is higher than ever crazy levels. And there is a question of the quality of Star Wars Outlaws uh, being discussed right now. And, and. Granted, like I've made a video about it about two years ago, and we're going to get to that in just a second. But if that's being questioned, they might have already just shot themselves in the foot with this insane pricing structure where you don't even get the full game on day one. So you get the season pass, which includes day one DLC that is off the disc. And just as a note, they first did this nonsense with Assassin's Creed 2. This is not new for Ubisoft. Battle of Forley sees Ezio march with Machiavelli in late January for $4, Bonfire of the Vanities uh, lighting in late February for $5. Now, this content was like sequence 13 and 14 or something of Assassin's Creed 2, which in the base game you could see were just grayed out for unknown reasons, and then they later charged you money for it. They later charge you money for it. It's nuts. This is not a new Ubisoft strategy. And I want y'all to go back to the first, I think you can go to the first video I ever made on this channel where I talked about how much I don't like these practices. You go to oldest, breaking the news, DLC is terrible, fix it. Eight years ago, nobody watched it. And I don't talk about this stuff anymore because I feel like I've said it so many times. I criticized Capcom for it when they did it during Street Fighter 4, when they had characters on the disc that you had to pay DLC, you had to pay a code to unlock them. Because you notice that like your disc had all the code and then you would download like a, a hundred kilobyte file and it would unlock the character so you could play with it. So this is like an old 360 era strategy, right? And Ubisoft, they're getting caught with their hand in the cookie jar. This is bad. This is not good. And this $100 thing, they're doing it as an upsell tactic, but everybody sees it. And a big part of the reaction is this to be clear. So let's not pretend like that is not a thing. What else do we have here? Rogue Infiltrator Bundle. The Rogue Infiltrator Bundle includes more cosmetics. We have the Shark Bundle uh, cosmetics, and we have the digital art book for $129. But here's where they want you to go. They want you into their subscription service known as the Ultimate Edition of Ubisoft Plus. And that's like, obviously for $17.99 a month, how could you go wrong? Access to 100 plus PC games. Wow. I would have to go back and research that Master Jazz Master says, how can you prove it's cut content? If you're talking about Assassin's Creed 2, I don't know what they were doing back in the day, but you had your complete game on the disc and they would send, when you purchase the character, it's, I mean, when was Street Fighter 4? When did that come out? Abel was the first character, right? That I think you could buy. Can't remember. 
Anyway, it was some character that was added to the game, and they did it sort of with Assassin's Creed 2. Every version of Assassin's Creed 2 since added that content. I, I believe it was an upselling tactic, and it has not changed. Every version of Assassin's Creed 2 since included that in the bundle. And then a lot of the sentiment is stuff like this. This is one of the reasons I won't be buying it. Another is the internet need for a single player game. Oh, yeah, you have to be online. It's always online. Andrew C says, remember way back in Destiny 1, you were saying how the silver was a slippery slope. I thought you were mad, but you were right. Like, I don't, thank you, Andrew. Like, I don't say this stuff because, like, I'm an insane person. I say it because it's poison. It's poisoning the well of AAA. Microtransactions are very bad. And anytime you buy, like, go ahead, buy them. Oh, it, games are worse? Okay, keep buying your microtransactions. That money isn't going to, like, support the studio. Like, stop buying that nonsense narrative. That's not what's happening. It's executives making those decisions, and they're trying to fleece you. And, and it's just crazy that people are like, oh, I got to get the 80. What's the microtransaction now? There's a $60 horse in in uh, Diablo, and there's like an $80 gorilla fist in Call of Duty. What is going on? And the whales buy that stuff. And like, wouldn't that have been a cool thing to unlock in like the campaign by doing some secret stuff? Like we, we've lost those sort of experiences. Ubisoft are releasing two DLCs for AC, yeah, AC Battle of Forley and the Bonfire beginning of next year, which could fill in sequence 12 and 13 gap. That's what the DLC was, yes. And requiring online is just BS. It's absolute BS. I mean, how do we know this is the case for the new Star Wars game? It's day one DLC. So we do know. Look. So here's what they did. They have the base game for $70. And then you get three days early access and you get a season pass where you get an exclusive mission available at launch if you pay $109.99 US dollars. So we know they took this out of the $70 version of the game and put it in the $109 version of the game because they're doing an upsell tax. It's like when you go to the cash register and they have Kit Kats and stuff there. Oh, well, if you just spend a little bit more or you can get into our $17.99 a month thing. I wonder if they have a five-day trial or something. It is gross. It's really problematic. I, I find this very problematic. And this, this is very upsetting. This is like... Like, look, I'm actually interested in star wars outlaws a bit <laughs> but this is a huge turnoff these practices in terms of monetizing your community in this way is gross the fact that it's always online and it's probably got a bunch of drm stuff in there i do not like that i'm all for more star wars stories and exploring new stories and such like that but um this this is like what i talked about eight years ago in the first video i ever made on my channel like this is where we're going y'all like, it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse than that. Now, there's also a conversation about the, the character model and such that a lot of people have been discussing. And I just want to say that um, I do think it's been kind of gross. I, I made a video a long time ago on the channel where I talked about this, actually. So I, I just want to play that. This is like two, almost three years ago. And this video is very bad. Do not go watch it because I say a bunch of stuff that's just flat out wrong about Horizon. But at the end of it, I, I had this little conclusion. No game is ever going to be good now. Like this, this is what this is what game is going to be like from now on. We're going to see every every trailer during E3. Everyone's going to find the five frames that they don't like. And then that's going to be the meme. And we're all going to laugh about it. I'm just sort of fatigued by this, this style of humor, I suppose. Call me humorless. Call me whatever you want. Yeah, so like that was in 2021 and it's gotten real bad. So this, 
I just want to say this isn't about like the attractiveness level of the character or anything like that. And uh, what's the main character name? Kvass. Yeah, it's Kvass, right? So, um, but I, I did want to talk about this topic. The, the Kvass character, I'm I'm very conf confused. So I've I've said my rant. This is Kvass. This is a kind of a cool shot of Kvass with uh, the the dog thing i don't know star wars but uh, i i think this is a good shot of kvs where you know it's actiony kvs is supposed to be like a bounty hunter similar to uh, uh han solo so sort of an interesting character but um a lot of people have pointed out how the character model looks really different here's here's a behind the scenes documentary where they they discuss playing the character and this is the actress, let's go to the, the YouTube channel. I'm sure it's just dislike the crazy. Hi, my name is Umberly Gonzalez and I play K Vess in Star Wars Outlaws. K Vess is a thief. She's the gameplay looks good. The gameplay looks a fun. Scoundrel. She's really good at sneaking around. You know, she's charming and she'll like talk to you, but she's already taking all your things. She isn't perfect at it, but she always seems to get away with it. Kay really finds herself uh, I, in a bit of a jam. You know, she's. Got I I think the the motion in motion the character looks a lot better than what what a lot of people have been saying on her and, back and is trying but, to find work. That's when she starts to really realize I kind of like this underworld <laughs> business. I kind of like. It, so I do think that the game is going to be better. A lot of people are like, oh, this game looks so bad or whatever. But um, I I think it's going to be better. So this is. The actress, what's her name? I wrote it down here. Kimberly Gonzalez, right? No. All right. Humberly Gonzalez. Humberly Gonzalez. Sorry. Yeah, so this is Humberly Gonzalez. She's doing the facial capture. And then uh, here's her headshot. We'll get to that in a second. And then here's Kay Vess in the game. So Humberly Gonzalez, Humberly Gonzalez, Humberly Gonzalez, the character. The character model doesn't look like Humberly Gonzalez. Her nose is different. Maybe I'll give you the eyebrows. Uh, the jawline is different. And this isn't this, just to be clear, this is not me saying like, I have an issue with the character looking how she looks. But what I, what I don't understand and what I want to ask Ubisoft is, why does that character look so different? I, I ran a few of the images from the game through, uh, a, it's like an AI thing. So I don't know how good this is. So here's me, like two very different photos of me, hundred percent similar, right? Uh, obviously I look like me and I ran some of the other characters through here. So this is, uh, this is Kira, Amelia Clark, 83% similar. This is her from the star Wars television show. This is her in the same game in star Wars outlaws. This is an actor, uh, 53%. I think the beard's throwing it off. This actor's name is on IMDb. He is credited as playing Slero. It's Cowler, Cowlan Byer. He plays Slero. Uh, here is Jabba the Hutt in the game. <laughs> and here is Jabba the Hutt from the, the movie, right? It looks like they got Jabba pretty good, you know? Uh, and then... Uh, Janica Vanker, this is her in Star Wars Battlefront 2, and this is her in real life from something off of her IMDb, 100% similar. And then we come to the main protagonist of the game, and I tried to find two flattering shots of the character. It's 28.45% similar. And it's Humberly Gonzalez with Humberly Gonzalez from the game. And I, I, I don't understand what happened with the character model. And it's not that, like... It's not anything about the attractiveness level. It's like as somebody that did character modeling, it's it's different. And I don't and like Amelia Clark is the same. Uh Slero, like they seem to nail the 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 character and everything. And then where's the shot of Humberly? It's like it's very clear they did facial work with this character. And, you know, Humberly went there and I I just, I would love to hear from Ubisoft why the character looks different. Like, look at the, 
this is the official Ubisoft video. This is their official thumbnail. The nose isn't the same. So there, this is based off of something. This model is based off of something, right? I saw somebody like take an AI image and they're like, oh, it's based off the 80s character from da 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 da. But I couldn't find anything about Kay Vass or the history of Kay Vass and, you know, why she looks different than the, the actress. But there has to be a reason. And, and I'm, I just don't get it because you, this is their trailer showing Harmony really Gonzalez. And this is their thumbnail <laughs> for the documentary about Humberly really Gonzalez. And the lips are a little closer, I guess here, but the nose is off. Eyebrows are bushier on in game. Eyes are a little different. Yeah. I don't know. I thought it was strange. And I, I would, I think there's a reason that every other character matches up. I don't think this is woke stuff. I think there's some piece of context that we don't have. Right. Because like everybody jumps onto that whole thing. And I just think it's too easy of an answer, but I, it's also something that I don't like, like that's the focus of it. Like, what about the gameplay? Were you interested in the gameplay? What about the premise of this character? Like, cause I think the premise of the game looks really interesting. I think the gameplay looks somewhat interesting. I might play it. And I posted something about this. I'm like, here's my controversial take. You don't have to play star Wars, uh, outlaws. Just don't play it. And I, I think that's the only answer really. Like if you're not into it, then don't do it. I I don't get why Amelia Clark is like perfect, but the protagonist isn't. It's like wh why did they nail Amelia Clark, but they obviously didn't nail the protagonist. It has to be because it's based off of like some obscure Star Wars thing. I don't get. That's my take on it. Her nose is broken in game. Can anybody tell me any details? Because I've been curious. I haven't seen like the answer. There has to be an answer for it. So I'm not one that's going to jump on the hate bandwagon, but I, I am also unclear as to why it was different. The nose is broken. The nose is totally different. Like this part of the nose is different. I did. <laughs> we had to do like drawings of, of people when I was in college and uh like it's it's different it's not the same maybe the mouth the mouth shape might be the same but yeah and i don't think like night saber i don't think that's what's going on i don't get why you said her nose is broken what else what else did i miss turbo i like this actually because people are like here's why it's different well her nose is broken okay what else you got Eyebrows, I can give it to you. Jawline, yeah, the lips look right. In this shot, in this shot, the lips look right. But the nose is, it's a different nose. Maybe she asked for a different nose. The eye is a little different, yeah. But like, I don't wanna take like all the ones where they're making her look as bad as they possibly can because I don't feel like that's gen genuine either. And I don't I don't particularly care what the protagonist looks like personally. Male is one to one, female is not. No, the females in the character the females in the game, the women in the game are also one to one. Like Amelia Clark is basically one to one. So that's not accurate because we have this shot of Amelia Clark, which is basically 83% accurate. And this is Amelia Clark, uh, who plays key Ra in the game and her counterpart from the television shows and whatever this dumb AI thing is, it gives it 80%. No, no, no. Somebody in chat said there was a reason for it. Joshua. I'm not just trying to create controversy. Because I know, no, it's not, but it's higher than 23%. 
Yeah, well, I'll just say this. Let's watch. Let's just watch the Star Wars Outlaws trailer. Let's do that. So let's listen to this because I think this is interesting. This is a documentary about the actress who was very excited to play this role. So, like, there's clearly something we're all missing. Hi, my name is Umberly Gonzalez, and I play K Vess in Star Wars Outlaws. K Vess is a thief, she's a scoundrel. She's really good at sneaking around. You know, she's charming and she'll like talk to you, but she's already taking all your things. She isn't perfect at it, but. She I love Humberly's energy. Like Humberly as an actress seems great. And she's excited about this role. So it's really unfortunate that it's mired in the, the really gross controversy, honestly. I'm just, I don't understand why the model is different, but I, I think Humberly seems super excited about the role. She always seems to get away with it. Kay really finds herself uh, in a bit of a jam. You know, she's got a bounty on her back and is trying to find work. That's when she starts to really like, that's a good shot. find work. That's when she starts to really realize. I, I like the jam. The pr you know, I really like this scene because it and is trying to find work. That's when she starts to really realize. Kind of like sets the tone for the world. character. She's a bit of a scoundrel, Business. right? I kind of like this world, and she's trying to thrive on it. She has to survive because nobody else will save her unless it's her. The only person that she has that, is her companion. That's Nick. a better comparison. They're not even human, but that is the closest thing she has to feeling a part of something in the world. She's paid to say the I thing she's saying. I also think that Nick's in a lot of ways. Okay. It's kind of an extension <laughs> of Kate. But she seems genuinely gameplay happy. Gameplay sense or a story sense, you know. In gameplay, she allows Kate gameplay to do looks good. she never thought possible. And in the story, it's also a way for Kay to kind of you know, sense when something's off or, or see an opportunity or that kind of thing. Really, they're completely connected. I love that relationship. I'm so excited for people to meet next because they're gonna fall in love with him too. Outlaws takes place right between The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. So it's the civil war between the rebellion and the empire. That is premise wise. I think this sounds cool. Well, it's two. Th I think the main negative thing, in my opinion, is the pricing structure. So they, they Siegfried to answer your question, they got hit from two angles about Star Wars Outlaws. Um, watching this trailer, I'm actually kind of into it, honestly, but I am not into their pricing structure. It's always online. It has a $60 version and then it has a $110 version of the game. And that is problematic, obviously. And then they have like a hundred, like a two, some insane version of the game. The hundred nine dollar version of the game has day one DLC on it. So yeah, yeah. Cipher, I agree with you. The business model. And the only other thing I'm saying is I don't understand why the character model looks different. I don't care that the character. I'm curious why, right? Like. Because one of two things happens. There's a reason that makes sense or the animators failed in some some way because there's a bunch of other characters that look much closer to their real life counterparts. created this pocket of opportunity for syndicates and criminal organizations to rise up in that space. We've got the Pikes, we've got the Huts, we've got a new syndicate that we've crafted uh, for this game called the Ashiga Clan. And one of the phrases we always held on to was this notion of you live and die by your reputation. So it's really exciting for Kay and, I, and hopefully for players. She's so fearless. She's there for motion capture, no likeness capture. So who is the character based off of? There has to be a lore character that we don't know about. That's what I want to know. You'll see her just go for it. I and think gameplay looks there's great. There's no stopping her even when there's danger involved, even when there's fear underneath it, she'll never let you see it. Not really. For a scoundrel story, you know, you really have to ask yourself, when is enough enough? How no, like guys, Amelia Clark's in the game and she looks one-to-one -one or dang close. Like it looks like Amelia Clark. I don't even like talking about this stuff because I wind up looking like an idiot. <laughs> Or like one of the people being terrible on online, right? How far is Kay willing to go to land that big score? And that, those are questions she's going to tackle 
through the whole story. We worked with Lucasfilm every step of the way in crafting the story, and they were an invaluable partner in helping us create and craft this thing. They were really embracing us with open arms in terms of, hey, we want to focus on the underworld. We want to focus on an outlaw navigating through that space. But we're sort of there to help guide and point out like, hey, here's an opportunity you might not have looked at, or there's a character you might, might want to consider. So really, it was a partnership through and through. I Ooh, that's cool. Yeah, like she looks fine. That's my dude. I guess I got your stream a bit late. I am now understanding your reporting and elaborating on this report. I'm so happy to hear a post from the actress herself. Yeah. Josh, it was the same thing, man. So just to catch you up, I'm just trying to figure out what's going on here. That's why I'm watching this. It's a five minute thing with the actress. And they said they work directly with LucasArts. There is a reason for this. And I don't think it's like conspiracy theory stuff. <laughs> I think it's a lore thing, for lack of a better term. I feel like this is one of the biggest, if not the biggest franchise. I feel like this is and one like, of yeah. the biggest. You know what? You're not going to see this shot of KVS. That looks pretty close to the actress, actually. I think that that looks a lot closer. Let's look at that actress again. Yeah, that's. Okay, that's pretty close. I think that's pretty close. So is it just an angle thing? No, you don't think so? All right, whatever. <laughs> I, I think this particular shot is a much better shot than all the nonsense I've seen online. It's one of the biggest, if not the biggest franchise of our lifetime. The themes, like everything. It's also such a weird thing for everybody to latch on to. Of all the things, like the thing you should be mad about is the pricing structure. Not necessarily the character who's back of the head we're going to look at most of the time. I think it's just been a part of our world. And for me and, and for the world of Star Wars, I know that people are going to love this game, not just for how amazing the gameplay is, but like the story itself, to see a young girl become a woman and become an outlaw. What, are you worried? No. Umberly's energy, her humor, her wit, all of that really has kind of helped inform the character. She has a way of jumping between that matinee action, high stakes the tone, to shifting to really intimate, really personal performances that make you connect to Kate. Getting to bring my own heart and then mix it in with that confidence and her toughness and her charm and wit, it's, it's really fun. It makes her very endearing, even though she's a very tough person. You won't make a Dr. Shah alive. Maybe. And yeah, it kind of feels like she was always meant to BK, mm -hmm. she informs it in every way. This is cool. I don't know. I like honestly, this behind the scenes thing has me more interested I in the game. Love bring a character like this to life, and it's an honor, honestly, to be a part of this world. It's definitely a dream come true, and I'm still doing it. So literally, like about to hop and do a scene right Andrew, now. Andrew, I kind of agree so with you. It's all just I I don't think I don't think this is that big of a deal, right? I. I am curious about the why, though. Just exciting. And, and it has to be a lore thing that we're going to find out when it's played, if people and play And I it. feel now I'm really locked into the character. The team is amazing, and I feel very supported. And I'm happy that they found me, because I feel like I was meant to play this role. Make sure to catch me alongside with some developers and cast members at Comic-Con International this July in San Diego. Bro, I just talked about it for like 20 minutes about how, what I don't like about it. Uh, What else we got here? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not as salty as everybody else seems to be about this game. Like, look at this likes to dislike. It's insane. 130,000 dislikes. Like, it's just getting, yeah.
The whole Star Wars Outlaw situation is a continuation of the thing I talked about in 2021, where I'm just like, people are latching on to the minutia of it, right? As opposed to, well, is the gameplay good? Because if the gameplay is good, I think I think all a lot of this goes away. I still really hate the microtransaction practices in the property. Yeah, Lannan says it best. Everyone mad that she looks worse in game. Meanwhile, I'm worried because it's made by my Ubisoft. Yeah, I think it's the three days early access. No, it's the fact that they took a whole mission out of the game and early access for like $109. It's nuts. And I, I think I think they're going to not do well with the with the game because of it. Yeah, I th I think it's going to be a big headache for them. So anyway, that's a whole thing. Uh, that's all I really had. There's nothing else going on. What did y'all think about the Fallout TV show? So here's a question for you. If you were to go play Fallout today... Which one would you play first? I would play Fallout 3. That's the one I would recommend. The Fallout TV show was excellent. Absolutely agree. Was there any news I missed? Like nothing happened. New Vegas. Uh, so Filaroni, my only thing about New Vegas is it's too goofy. Like there's too much of the goofiness in it. I like Fallout 3 because it's a really good mix but most people like New Vegas more. I think three is the easiest to play in modern times. Like it trans, it still holds up pretty well. If you've played 76, you can play three. You give the show a seven out of 10. Clay, can you ban tech four, eight, nine? Just kidding. <laughs> I couldn't get into New Vegas for some reason. Microsoft needs to get achievements set up for Fallout 1, 2, and Tactics because 1 is still good. 1 is really hard to play. I would say 1 is really hard to play. I was joking. I never played Fallout, but I love the show. The show was great. I really, really love the show. Can I ban him anyway? No, Clay. Just joking around, man. Uh, yeah, the whole you can buy the whole... Let me bring up Steam really quick. Oh, yeah. So here's the Fallout franchise sale. This is only this weekend, by the way. So the this is like the whole franchise. You can get everything in Fallout 76 for $7.99 right now. You can get all everything for $55.55. I should maybe I should get this. I kind of want to get this because it's seven bucks. Like normally it's $40 right now. It's seven 99. That's nuts. And I think today's the last day. And they're doing free play for Fallout 76 right now. So here's the franchise bundle. Let's see what it includes. And they have similar dis. <laughs> here's what you save $9 and 41 cents. So I already own some of this stuff. Wouldn't you just buy the follow-up game of the year edition? Anyway, you get Fallout, Fallout 2, Fallout Tactics, Fallout 3 game of the year, Fallout New Vegas Ultimate, which includes some like content. Uh, what else here? Fallout 4, Fallout 4 VR, Fallout 76 Atlantic City edition. Anyway, you get everything for like 55 bucks. Oh, sorry, 3761. I don't know why it changed when I looked at the page.
Lots of good sales there. Because you own some of the items? Oh, okay. Yeah, I actually ended up buying. So by the way, if you have Game Pass, you have access, especially if you have Game Pass Ultimate, you on PC, you already have access to like all the games. I bought Fallout 3. And I bought Fallout New Vegas, but then I booted up my Xbox and you know what? I have saves in New Ve I have like end game saves still in Fallout New Vegas because it imports all of your 360 saves if you've had your account that long. So that's nuts. Bill Aroni, thank you so much. I think I forgot a tip before. I didn't do it on the board. I might do a little bit of a shorter stream because I think that's it for the news. Like that's what people were talking about. Uh oh, Phil, the marker's not working. Phil and I'll say OG gave me $5. And he said I was right. I played the hell out of 76 at release, then again last year. I, c I cannot get into 76. And it took me forever to finish four. I never went back. I never went back and replayed all of the, um, endings. Sorry. My brain shut off for a second. So like I finished fallout four, but I never went back and got all the endings or whatever. Clay says, what about the new fire team chat came back for an episode? Well, I mean, to all hundred people watching, we might actually do a second episode of fire team chat. I think I'm going to do it next week. I kind of wanted to do it this week, but I couldn't get three people together on such short notice. And we already kind of did an episode, but I've been playing destiny again. I'm trying to finish season of the wish. I have like two more missions in season of the wish. And then there's like, I think I'm going to do the montages again. I'm just going to throw caution to the wind and put up my destiny montages through the final shape and call it a day. Because they're going to take all that away again. They're going to just delete it all. Any hope for D2 to become good again? It's pretty good right now, Bashi Washi. But um, I am interested in whatever they end up doing. Yeah, so Destiny 2 had a trailer for the final shape. And they're introducing a new subclass called Prismatic that allows you to mix and match your subclass abilities. So you can have like Strand and Solar, I think was one. And it's like mixed together. <laughs> And you can get a new Titan or you can get a new Mark or a Bond or whatever. And uh, it will combine two exotic traits that allow you to utilize different exotic traits on your character and they're random rolled. So yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty nuts. Fallout Shelter was pretty fun. You know, I put my time in Fallout Shelter and then I bounced. Do you think we'll see Fable again at the Xbox showcase? I hope so. I, you know, Fable's another one caught up in, in that. Not, that's one I just, I'm not. I'm not as into because I think they're going, I think that's just like a, the goofiness that they're going for, you know, with, uh, I don't know. I think this is supposed to be a random, random character. And those characters, like they fart and they're really gross and burp and yeah. If you remember, they nerf abilities because they want the people to use guns. No, no, no. They give you an overpowered ability. Avowed is what I'm looking forward to. I am also looking forward to Avowed. I don't know what to do for the rest of the stream. We kind of covered off on everything already. I had that there's no peace option in 4. Yeah, like, I don't, I don't really like what happened with 4. Would you want an Elder Scrolls TV show? I mean, if it's as good as the Fallout, Fallout TV show, then yes. Uh, it was so, it was great. The Fallout TV show was really, really great. What do you expect to see at this Summer Games Fest or Summer Games events? Uh, video games, probably. I think we're going to see a lot of new stuff. I think we might see new hardware. Everybody's been teasing new hardware. So maybe we get teases there from either PlayStation or Nintendo or something. 
Checked out of Destiny 2 when they chopped the game in half and vaulted it. They said they're not going to do that again. Fallout 4's writing was terrible, but the actual gameplay mechanics are amazing. I would agree with that gaming, gaming nating. I think there's just... There are some good quests in Fallout 4. But it's not like New Vegas or it's not like 3 where you kind of like end up on these really spectacular quests that catch you off guard. I think the one with the robot from the first city you visited in 4, I can't remember his name. He's like a detective guy. Uh, that one is a really good story that I remember going on. And there's sort of like a revelation at the end, similar to some of the stuff that happened in Fallout 3. God, just play Fallout 3, man. Fallout 3 is so good. Hi, Stracy. Good to see you. Over on Twitch, if you're wondering YouTube. Yeah, there's not a ton going on right now. Maybe we should just uh, call it this week and I'll play some Destiny solo. What do you think about the new Xbox having the biggest technical leap mean? I'm not sure. Like, what does that even mean today? As somebody that is primarily gaming on PC these days and, you know, I'll chill out on the couch and play on the Xbox, but like, what does that even mean? The largest technical leap? You've said that like three times. <laughs> you said that with the one X, you said that with the series X, you got to do something. The handheld thing, the handheld rumor that gets me hype. You know, what doesn't get me hype? The largest technical heap. It's like a oh, technical leap. All right. Great. You told me that with your 8K PlayStation 5 and your 8K Xbox Series X. I don't buy it anymore, and I have a computer. And a lot of people are kind of coming to the same conclusion, you know? They're like, wait, so everything's on PC? Why Why don't I just buy a PC? It's multi-use. So, yeah. No, it's their marketing, right? Nine Lives, I get it, and I'm not criticizing y'all for bringing it up. I'm just saying it feels like fewer people are like jumping on that. The consoles are going to have to get more expensive or they'll be behind PC. Hmm. It means nobody will support these new technically superiority. AI and cloud. Yeah. So a lot of people have talked about how there's going to be like an AI chip that will make your games look better. And I think that could be really interesting. Yeah. That could definitely be interesting for sure. Xbox will exit console market and they are going to make something like Steam Deck. Nah, they're going to stay in console. They've already confirmed they're not going anywhere in console. So at least for the next 10 years, 15 years, you're going to have an Xbox console. So that's not happening. I do wonder. Hardware feels like it's it's like not evolving at a rapid rate, like the, the physical hardware stuff. It, it's going to have to be technology. Technology is going to be the next leap. It's not going to be the the physical devices because I feel like we we kind of hit this point already where tech isn't going to innovate that much. I don't know much about CPUs and GPUs, but yeah. Won't Xbox try to have a more powerful console when GTA 6 launches? I would hope so because the rumor is that PlayStation is going to have theirs and hopefully Xbox has their answer. But maybe Xbox's answer is to offer the handheld. Play GTA 6 on the go. I mean, that would be kind of interesting. Chat, I hate to let y'all down. I tried to have a, an hour-long show today, but there's just not a ton to go over. I don't have any reacts set up. I hurt my thumb setting up a, a drip system. <laughs> Clay's got one more question. All right, last one from Clay. UE5 is going to be the benchmark. Yeah. Oh, we didn't talk about the Hellblade previews, but they're looking mighty fine. Still a good show. Thanks. Sorry about the Star Wars stuff. Like, I don't like to get into those because it gets into like really uncomfortable territory for me because it's kind of some of the conversations are gross. Like, I, I don't like that aspect of it. But then as like as a guy that used to do 3ds max models and i'm really interested in how the technology works i am curious about the departure so it's more of an analytical thing but yeah i debated not talking about that one maybe i shouldn't have <laughs> oh 
Oh yeah, but the pre-order stuff is total bullshit. Is it your thumb or mine? Clay, what's your question? Does Amazon doing a great job with Fallout give you more hope for the Mass Effect TV show? Oh, hell yeah, it does. I totally forgot that was a thing. Good call, Clay. So Amazon, they just did the Fallout show. They're also working on the Mass Effect show. I wonder if they got Drew Carpition to like chime in on their script or whatever. Anyway, I'm going to get out of here. That's a really good question, Clay. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Thank you so much to all the members that support. I really do appreciate you so very much. If you like this stuff, of course, hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell. And if you want to support, you can do so through a membership or just hitting that like button if you like the content. I am going to get out of here. Thank you, everybody, for watching. I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now.